This video will cover the topic, transforming the graph of a quadratic, cubic, square root, or absolute value function. There are a few different types of transformations that are possible when looking at graphs of functions. We can translate the graph horizontally or vertically, stretch or shrink the graph, and reflect the graph across an axis. How do we know when to do these transformations? We translate the graph horizontally or vertically if a constant is added or subtracted. We stretch or shrink the graph if a new coefficient is multiplied, and we reflect the graph across an axis if the coefficient is negated. I think I understand, but can we practice these rules? Let's take a look at the graph of y equals x cubed. Say we want to transform this graph to make the graph of y equals negative x minus 4 cubed plus 3. What operations have we performed on this function that make it different from our original function? Well, we subtracted 4 from the x inside the parentheses. We also negated that quantity. And finally, we added 3 outside the parentheses. Good! These operations correspond to the transformations we must perform. Let's look at this problem in parts. We can begin with the first operation, subtracting 4 from x inside the parentheses, corresponds to a horizontal translation. Since we subtract 4, we translate the graph of y equals x cubed to the right 4 units to result in the graph y equals x minus 4 cubed. Next, we'll look at what happens when we negate that quantity containing the x variable. Since we are negating the x quantity, we will reflect the graph across the x-axis. This results in the graph y equals negative x minus 4 cubed. Finally, we'll see what happens when we add 3 to the function. Adding a constant outside the parentheses corresponds to a vertical shift in the function. This tells us we'll translate the graph upward 3 units to result in the graph y equals negative x minus 4 cubed plus 3. This is our target function, so we now see that our final transformed graph looks as follows. These rules for transforming graphs don't only apply to cubic functions like the one we have here. We can also use them when working with quadratic functions, square root functions, absolute value functions, and others. Okay, so when transforming the graphs of these functions, we need to pay attention to constants being added, subtracted, or multiplied to the function in some way. These operations will correspond to possible horizontal and vertical translations, shrinking and stretching, and reflections across the x or y axis. Great work!